Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I am your usual host, Kevin, and today I have the pleasure of both meeting and introducing you to AJ Vassar. Um, AJ is a motivational speaker who uses his life experiences to captivate audiences with simple mental hacks that transform their lives. He grew up in a single-parent, low-income household in Illinois and had to use mental hacking techniques to go from eating out of a trash can and sleeping in his car to building a, for what appears to me, to be a wildly successful life and business. AJ, I'm really, I'm glad you're here for the podcast, and I'm also just really glad to meet you. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm glad to be here. This is, uh, this is cool, man. I, I, I love the synergy, the energy. So I'm looking forward to the conversation. That's something I, I I realized very early on in this podcast is just to let the light shine. It's it's you know just don't put anything in way. Don't don't obscure it. Don't obstruct it. Just if you if you're feeling joyous, be joyous. If you're feeling a little silly and lighthearted, be silly and lighthearted. You're gonna get to the deep stuff naturally because of who you're talking to. So it's just like just like we were talking about before I hit record, just trusting it and taking yes, that step. Oh, yes, always sir. pays off. Yes, sir. I love it. Well, let's let's go back. Not all the way to the beginning, because I don't think we had that kind of time, but let's go back to your beginnings as a coach. And I kind of like to frame this as like an almost like a superhero origin story, because there's always like, it's not always a singular moment, but there, it's, in retrospect, obviously, you could see all the steps on your journey. But what was, what would you say prompted you to realize or lead you to discover that you either already were a coach or that coaching was the right word for what you wanted to be and the, you know, how you wanted to have the kind of impact you wanted to have in the world. How did you, how did you realize or discover that? So it's interesting. I had been probably pseudo coaching for years. I, I started <laughs> off as a professional barber. So I was always helping people in my, in my barbershop and my barber chair um, was helping family and friends. And it actually happened when I was sleeping in my car. Um, one of my one of my good friends, his name is Rob Minger. He's a uh, up and coming comedian is doing great things. Um, he said, yo, I want you to be my, my my coach. And because he knew my situation, I was thinking, hmm. man, you either are crazy as hell <laughs> or you really see something in me that like I'm not seeing right now. <laughs> and it was so funny because I was the best man at his wedding um, last April. And I I was reflecting on that, like, wow, that's like I literally started coaching him when I was homeless. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> he was like, nah, man, what you say work. I just see that you're in your process. So I was like, all right, cool. And it went from there, man. So coaching people was one of the things that I just I love helping people. I love. Um, seeing people transition from where their current state is to changing either a behavior or a feeling that they have about themselves to get to get the things that they desire in life. So, oh, it's so I I, I love that story, and I, I love especially love the fact that you were best man at his wedding just last year. It's like you're, it's like I, I can't help but reflect back. Like I, I can see it on your face a little bit too. You're like the journey. You can I can see the journey in like a, in a flash all over your face, where it's like, man, how we started and where we got to and where we're going. It's just so like when you experience that and you have someone who like sees something in you that you can't see and then also like takes action to help guide you to that to further realizations. They're not coming in and telling you what to do. They're giving you a shot. They see something yeah. and they're trusting that and taking that step. And then you experience you're on the receiving end of that. And when you when you are on the receiving end of that, I feel like it's a certain kind of person who pretty much exclusively will move into coaching is like, I need to give this back to other people. I need to find it because like having this done for me and what it's done for my life and the way I've, I've experienced it, I need, I need to get this in the hands and the hearts of everybody I can. <laughs> and coaching is one of the best ways to do it. Definitely. definitely. I love, I love teaching my frameworks. I love um, helping people create their own mental frameworks that work for them <laughs> because everybody has their own journey. Everybody's going through things that, you know, we don't know. Like I tell them, you're, I'm, I'm going to teach you to be your best coach. Like that's my mm -hmm. job as a coach is to teach you to be your best coach. Cause you, you're with you 24 seven. Mm -hmm. I only have you for a certain period, but if I can teach you the framework to coach yourself, then man, you're going to have a great life. So mm -hmm. that, that's my thing. I think that everybody should be taught how to become their best coach. And it's really that I think of certain words, like I think the first word that pops to mind is instill. Like whenever you're teaching someone or like you're raising someone or you're mentoring someone and you want to instill in them some sort of knowledge or awareness. And I feel like that's something that's really crucial, like right at the foundation of what coaching is, because there is that 
it's not really like th there's obviously frameworks and there's systems, but there's really that like guidance to where it's like you as a coach, you want to get someone to awaken within themselves that capacity to coach themselves, to guide themselves, to see the way forward for themselves, because they have like the I think of the uh, the analogy of like a high floor and a, or a low floor, high ceiling, like when you're evaluating like a prospect for a sport or whatever, you'll talk about like real high ceiling prospect or real high floors and like there's a certain minimum that they'll be really good at. And I love thinking about the fact that as our own coach, we have the highest ceiling to be able to yeah. see the most and do the most and say the most in the best, most impactful ways possible. And that what a coach does coming into your life is to try and help you awaken that within yourself. Yeah. It's so I, I get I get very almost uh, poetic and romantic about it because it's so it's, you see the impact it has on people's lives and you watch that capacity for self-governance and guidance and that that desire to give back and to serve awaken in somebody else. And it makes you remember what it felt like when you were there and what it yeah. feels like being there again. It's just, it's so, I mean, I, I say magical a lot because I, I, I get to a loss for words, but it really does feel that way every time. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and you know what? It reminds me, I started like really checking out like the etymology of words. And hmm. when, I, when I went and studied the word education, it comes from the Latin word educere, which means to draw out. So hmm. I tell people is I'm not putting into you. I'm actually drawing out of you because you already great. I just have to I have to draw it out of you. Like that's my job as a coach is to just draw yeah. it out of you. I love that. I did not know that. I love that. Oh, man. I'm going to put that about, like a sticky note or something like that. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> education isn't about giving to people. That's that like the root word for education isn't about teaching people. It's actually hmm. drawing out of them what they already know. Ah, mm. oh, it's so powerful. I want to like I want to like journal about it. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a break later on this evening. I'm gonna okay. sit aside. I'm just gonna like like think about that and write on that yeah. and like I'm gonna talk to my partner about it because that's just so that's so simple and so clear and so powerful and so right. <laughs> yeah. And then oh, that yeah. what it does for me as a coach is it takes the pressure off of me. Because I realize I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be all knowing. I don't have to have it all figured out. I just have to believe that greatness is inside of them and then have a heart and a desire to pull it out of them. And and if I can, if I can convince them that greatness is in them, then I feel like that produces a seed that as long as they keep watering it, it's gonna grow. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's so that, true. That's so else. It did really does. It makes me think too about how like a lot of coaches I talk to, they're very, they're very aware of making sure that they don't center themselves in their relationship with the people that they're coaching. Um, Cause you, you always, you always encounter people like this in just about any field who are, they're very, they're, they're sort of drinking their own Kool-Aid. They're sort of, you know, <laughs> buying their own story about how great they are. And that's, that's a temptation for everybody who's, who's having success and impact on the world. Um, and I feel like every really good coach I've I've talked to speaks to this in some way where they're like, they always want to make sure and be very careful that they're never, never in a position of dictation. It's always alongside, it's always guidance. It's always the pulling out. It's always the awakening of, of what's inside you. And it's always, it's always a, a, an awareness of not letting yourself as the coach become centered in somebody else's journey and how, Correct. how important that is. Correct. And, and it's because I, I was actually taught this uh, through a mentor of mine named Sam Shepard. When I was about to be homeless, Sh Sam, um, he was he's the number one African-American earner in Prime America. And at the time, he was making one hundred forty thousand dollars a month. And I remember going to him and telling him, like, hey, Sam, I'm about to be homeless. You know, I'm about to actually because I don't want to be homeless. I'm going to move back to Texas with my mom. And when I get back on my feet, I'll move back to Atlanta. And Sam <laughs> said, no, you're not. He said, um, <laughs> One, no woman wants a man that runs to his mom when times get hard. So we're not going to start <laughs> that, right? And he said, number two, you'll learn more from your car than you ever will running from your problems. And then mm. he and, and he said, I have a safe parking lot for you to sleep in. Mm. And it stunned me because I, when he told me I wasn't, immediately my first thought was, oh, Sam is about to give me a loan, mm -hmm. right? That I can pay back later. And hmm. Sam was, no, I'm going to give you a safe parking lot so you can realize that I'm not your savior. Mm -hmm. Because if he had given me a loan, I would have always ran to Sam when mm -hmm. times got hard. And he would have stolen that experience from you too. That's like yeah. he would have stolen all the all the all the lessons you learned from that from that challenge. And I think and and he, he, he was wise enough to know it. That's that that, oof, it. that is a he wise gentleman right there. Yeah, he, knew it. he taught he taught me tough love. Mm -hmm. He taught 
self love. And, and so now I always tell people like, go through your go through your hard times because mm -hmm. when you do become successful, those will be the times that you miss the most. There there are still times I although my car was very uncomfortable because I'm six foot three. Um, at the time I was like 255 pounds, you know, mm -hmm. so it was very uncomfortable, but it was just that alone time that I had. It was like, mm -hmm. nothing. I didn't have any distractions. You know, it, it was, you know, there are still, like you say, the magical moments and mm -hmm. the isolation of the process. Mm. So I love, I, I'm, it's got me thinking about how, how important it is to not try to save someone but to give them a safe place to be like yes. he, that, that he identified the safety is yes. what you needed. So he wanted to make sure that you were, that you had your, your primary needs cared for, but that he didn't come in and try to save you because that would steal something from, from you about this experience. It would steal your, your future path. And he, he was wise enough to see that and loved you enough and had the discipline. Cause when you look, when you care about someone, there can be this rush to want to, to want to save them or to help them or to do anything you can and sometimes it's not about doing anything you can. It's about doing the right thing for yes. them. Yes. And you, you always have to. So uh, a good question that I, I I tell my clients is always ask yourself, then what? And go through mm -hmm. a process of then what, right? So, okay, Sam gives me $10,000. Then what? Mm -hmm. Then I owe Sam $10,000. And if once that money runs out, I'm still in the same place, right? Mm -hmm. Sam had the wherewithal to think through that. Right. Mm -hmm. Or if I just give him a safe place, he's going to do the work to figure it out himself. And when he gets out, he owes no one. Mm -hmm. And he has these lessons that are going to take him to the Medellin Columbia's of the world. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I tell people all the time, like they ask me, how are you able to move to Medellin Columbia and, and not know anyone you had never visited? And I told them I faced my boogeyman in, in my car, like my mm -hmm. boogeyman being homeless. That was my boogeyman. And once I faced it in my car, like what, what can't I do now? Mm. Mm. I, 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 I love your story. And I could, I could, I could talk in this space for, for forever. Cause I just, I love talking about this kind of stuff, these, these origin stories of discovery, but also that you mentioned that you're in Medellin now and it gets me thinking, it's like, I gotta be a good podcast host and let's talk about your coaching business. <laughs> yeah. Talk, talk about what you're doing today. So today, obviously you're based in Medellin right now um, and have been there for, I think you said like five years or so. Um, I like to ask this question kind of as like a two part because I feel like it gets at like the whole the whole um, the, the the wholeness, the whole foundation of your coaching business. So it's who do you coach as in like who do you primary focus on primarily focus on? Like, is there a certain certain industries that you specialize in or certain certain people in certain areas of their life that you kind of have a large client base in? And then how do you coach them being the second part where it's like, do you primarily still do one to one coaching? Um, and do you have anything else on top of that or aside from that, like group coaching that you do, or obviously you're a motivational speaker. So I imagine you do lots of keynotes and presentations and stuff like that. So who do you coach and how do you coach them? So typically I'm coaching, I end up coaching the people that are, they fit into the category of, of late bloomers. Um, ah, all right. Uh, I coach a lot of late bloomers. Like they, <laughs> they're just now starting to hit their stride. <laughs> um, a lot of underdogs, um, I coach, and a lot of them are people that have taken their, their willpower has taken them as far as it can go in business. They, right. Mm. Man, they're entrepreneurs or, or inspiring entrepreneurs that have really used just gut and, and, and mm. determination to get to this level. And it's like, now what, right. Mm. Because I feel like we all need systems to teach us things that we didn't learn. And I have an acronym for system. It's something you stick to emphatically and methodically. Mm, okay, I like that. I like that a lot. Right, so um, I think the Marines have a saying, you don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems, mm -hmm. right? So then that's my thing with them. So when we talk about my, my coaching methodologies, it's what systems do we need to set up in your life to make sure it just works with or without you? Right. And and when I say without you, I don't mean not you being in the process. I mean, when you wake up and you don't want to do it, mm -hmm. when you're not <laughs> who you felt you were yesterday, when you were all excited about being coached, what then can we is still in place and what what mechanisms can be put in place to make sure you do it? And I came up with this um, 
of a, a kind of grading concept. Um, and I, I mastered it in my car because I realized I wanted to have a great life, but in order to have a great life, then I needed to learn how to have great years, which means I had mm -hmm. to have months, which I mm -hmm. had to have days, right? So then if I stack enough great days together, I end up with a great life. So mm -hmm. how do I start, how do I start systemize, systematizing that to where I would realize there were times um, in my car, I would feel like, oh my God, this was a great day. Like I felt great. I didn't accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. I just felt good, mm -hmm. right? I just felt good. There were other times where I felt like this is the most crappiest day I've ever had. And I look back and I'm like, yo, you did everything that you said you were going to do. And because mm -hmm. of that, you graded out at an A. So it was like, how many A days can I grade together to end up with an A plus life? Mm. Mm. That's so bad. It's so many aspects of that that I like I gravitate towards that uh that uh um we don't rise to the level of our of our goals we fall to the level of our training or our systems that, that's something that I have various versions of that written in like notebooks and on sticky notes yeah. and on like a whiteboard just because that's like that's one of those things where it's like that's I I I'd like to be thinking about that either consciously or have it like be kind of underneath like on, on underneath the surface every day of my life because it's it's one of the truest things I've ever encountered and it's so true and I love that you identified it's like when you wake up in the morning and don't want to do something, it's like, it's not, we're not trying to get you out of your own life. We're trying to really get you all the way in. And there yes. are going to be some days where not only do you not want to do something or there's, there might be some days where your time and energy might be better spent somewhere else. And yet there are still things that need to be accomplished. There yes. might be days where you need someone who's going to be better than you at that thing. And so yeah. you need to have that person in place. You have to understand how to find that person, how to build a relationship with that person or those people, how to build that team. It just, it, there are so many different applications for, yeah. for the systemic approach to raising that floor so that, you know, your, your perfect average day is it's just such a high, high that, you know, you can't help but succeed. Then you save all of your best energy, all of that grit and determination that got you as far as it did, that then works towards your ceiling. That then lets you reach for the stars. And that's just that's so powerful. Oh. Right. And, and I think for me, it, it helps you set a standard, right? Because mm -hmm. if I ask you, hey, how did you do, how did you do November 23rd of last year? Mm. You don't know. Like the average person mm -hmm. has no idea how they did. And, <laughs> and think about that. Every successful business the number one thing they have to have to be successful is accounting. Mm -hmm. That's how you know you're successful. So I I almost, and, and not almost, it's basically an accounting system for your life so mm -hmm. that we can look back and see how, how were you doing then? How does this quarter compare to last quarter? How does this year compare to last year? How does this day compare to last year, right? Mm -hmm. And you can only do that if you actually understand what your standards were and in, in a certain sense, have a, a system set up to say, did I reach that standard today? Yes or no. So if I go four weeks without me to meeting my standard, I have to realize that success is actually lags. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to fill the four weeks, probably until another four to four weeks to 90 days from here. Hmm. But when I look at my life and it's not going as planned, now I can look back and say, all right, cool. I know why I'm struggling right now because I was mm -hmm. not on a month ago. Right? Most people don't have yeah. that stuff in their lives. It really gives you, I mean, it's like, it's, it, it gives you data. It gives you, it gives you actionable data where data. you can look and it gives you the ability to then ask more important questions or better questions. You start with a, like those yes, no's and you're like, yes. okay, so why is that? Why is that a no? And yes. it's been a, it's been a no for like, it was for four out of the last six days. And shoot, it's been a no for, for 11 out of the last 14 days. Something's going on here. I yeah. wonder what that might be. And then you get to ask better questions about that and discover more and gather more data because you've been committed to gathering that data. And it's just, it's it gives you this comparison. Again, I, I love thinking of it as just accounting, not only because it's sort of right there next to that word accountability, which is a big part of it too. But like, I just I just love that you can... The understanding and the awareness, and I think why, why I'm loving what you're doing and why I love your approach, is that a lot of people will, they'll think of these kinds of things as difficult to define, or difficult to make empirical, to understand in like in a sort in a sort of straight line way, and it's really just a matter of committing to a 
to put too fine a point on it, a system, you know, acronym or not to have a system for it. And that allows you to then begin to build up to a place where you can look and you can ask yourself questions and you can find the better questions and you can see where things are going astray and then build on that going forward. It's, it's so powerful. It's so simple too, especially when you break it down into those chunks. It's like, it doesn't have to be like, how do I, how do I evaluate a year? It's like, well, you don't, you start, you go back, you start with a day, you start with start maybe with even an hour, you know? Yeah. <laughs> With, and and that's all you do. You say so. Yeah. From the system I set up, I started realizing that when it came to my health, I would start falling off after three weeks. It never failed. Mm. I would <laughs> I would go strong for three weeks, and then something would happen, and I would start to fall off. Well, now mm. as I have data, now I don't beat myself up. Now I just say, oh, okay, cool. Let me start analyzing what happens in the three week period, and then how do I set up a buffer against that so that it doesn't hit me this time. Mm -hmm. So life, life, fitness, all of that has become better because all I was able to do was just look at the data, right? I don't have to beat myself up. I'm just looking, oh, okay, cool. In three weeks, this is when I really, like the first two weeks, I don't need any willpower. Mm -hmm. So stop using it. Mm -hmm. Save all my willpower for week three because that's when I fall off. <laughs> know thyself, thing. know thyself, yeah. it's, yeah. <laughs> oh, and, man. And that's what you know ourselves is with data yeah i want to I, I jealously self selfishly want to keep you for like hours and hours i uh, the, the way in which you are able to communicate yourself and your frameworks and your systems but also like communicate about your story and like your heart and your passion it's very it's like contagious i'm like i'm, I'm i have like a kind of welling excitement and I, I got this from like the first moments we were chatting before i hit record i know i commented on how like you'd already lightened my day getting to talk to you for you know 25 minutes i'm just like man i feel really good and also i'm like man, i got some i got some work to do i feel like yeah. it's fired so that's yeah. i but and so, but i do want to like wrap this up and get you out of here and i want to make sure that my audience knows where to find out more about you like where they can just learn more about you your story and your past present your future what you're doing now your coaching frameworks all of the above and then also if it's different where they could best connect with you if you have a social media platform or if you have like anywhere on your website that is the ideal place for people to go if they want to talk to you and start a relationship yeah so the, the best thing all of my social media handles are uh at aj vassar at aj yes and victor a s s a r um, I tell people, reach out all the time. I'm a, I'm a real person. Um, <laughs> I you know the thing that I, I love doing, I had so many people help me that, mm -hmm. you know, I don't mind helping people. Like, of course, I won't just coach people for free, like for the entirety, but like yeah. to help you, to, especially if someone is like, hey, can you do a video about this? Or can you break this down? Or have you thought, yeah, I mean, if it can sure. impact others, yo, reach out to me. I would love to, I would love to interact with you get to know you and um see how i can how i can help you i love so, it all right hey the, yeah? the only reason i just look weird is because i'm very observant i was looking uh -huh. at your desk and i saw this uh-huh and i have it right by my computer i was like because when i looked i was like is my, <laughs> i was like is, you know how you think like is my camera messed up is, is nope. that my, my, my oh no that's his <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I saw your face light up like a Christmas tree. And I was like, what's he looking at? I was like, somebody yeah, come in like, and say hi. He was looking forward to seeing it. I was like, nope, it's, it's one of our one of our favorite books. I learned so much from that book. And I read yes. it in, you know, a couple of hours in a day. And I've oh, gone yeah. back to it so many times. <laughs> yeah. No, great book. Great book. Oh, and for those people just listening, that's ex expert secrets. And you can find it if you don't already know about it. You can find it just about anywhere. It's like, what's, yeah. what's his name again? Russell Brunson. Russell I almost Brunson. called him Russell Brand. That's somebody different. Russell Brunson. <laughs> yeah, Russell Brunson. But no, that's cool, man. I love that. I love that. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, I love that. Well, shoot. I, I'm really, I'm, I'm just really grateful to have met you. I'm really glad that you're out there in the world doing what you're doing. I love your, I love your story. I love your passion. I love your, I love your, I love your systemic thinking. It makes me feel very, it speaks to, it speaks to that side of me in a very powerful way. Um, and I'm just, I was really glad to share some time with you and I'm, I'm totally going to have you back on the show. If you, if you enjoyed this conversation, like doing yes. podcasts like this, cause I love having yes. guests back on and being like, what just happened in the last four or five months or like, how does, how's your year been going so far? So I'm going to have you back on because this is just fantastic. Yes. And, and the next time I come on, one of the things that I'll do is I'll actually, uh, bring a show my grades. So Ooh. I'll show, people, right. I'll show people my grades. I'll show people what it looked like for me to, to grade myself and how that looks. 
No, oh, man. Again, getting little flashbacks to like the old uh, the old PTA meetings from back when I was in high school, which is a lot longer ago than I care to talk about right now, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. I'm in the same boat. Oh, man. Well, to the audience out there, I mean, you know, you know exactly what to do. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation half as much as I have. I'll have links to basically wherever you can find AJ, obviously AJ Vassar on all the social media. I'll have a link to his website. Anything you might need to find out more, I'll make sure it's in the show notes. You know what to do next. We'll talk to AJ here again in the next few months sometime. I'll have him back on and we'll talk to you again here with our next coach very, very soon. So thanks for being here.